This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So the story of the short film weirdly begins with my shitty laptop. Actually no, the original story of the short film really begins with me just sitting happily in my cozy and comfy air conditioned bedroom in my parents house waiting for a render to finish and then I take a little peek outside my window and I see a daily laborer sweating his ass off in a nearby construction site right in the middle of the afternoon as I idly sat in my room complaining about how hot it was outside as my silly little 3D scene got rendered and isn't it usually in these random moments of just idly sitting by and thinking about the world around you, you come up with some of your most bizarre and crazy story ideas. And that's exactly how I came up with the idea for this short film as well. It was such a simple thought, it was the thought of how two different people experience the same weather completely differently. Like maybe monsoon for you is a cozy and comfy time to have a cup of coffee and read your favorite book by the window, but maybe to someone else it's just a headache as they try and make their way home through the flooded streets and awful monsoon traffic. Maybe the winters are a fun time for you to go do some snowboarding, but maybe for someone it might just be a matter of life and death. And it doesn't have to be that morbid all the time, maybe summer for you is just going fishing in your nearby lake, but maybe for someone else it's just just sitting at home and drinking a beer and watching the game. And that's the idea I wanted to explore in the short film. It started with the shot of a table fan in a murky looking room and then it would switch to a fancy looking bedside table with an AC remote and some expensive looking glasses and some high wear out books beside it. It would then switch to a nice and cozy bathtub scene and then to an arid dry land with barely any water to even drink. And then it would switch to an ugly looking succulent that flourishes in the heat and then to a shot of a pretty looking cup of strawberry ice cream that will melt away in the heat. That's what the core idea was behind the shot of how the weather could just be such a drastically different experience for different kind of people. But let me back up a bit and go back to what I was originally saying in the beginning of the video. The story of the short film actually begins with my laptop. But let me explain. So I have a Lenovo laptop which has an Nvidia GTX 1650 graphic card with 4GB of VRAM in it. It has an AMD Ryzen 5 4600H processor and a total of 16 gigs of RAM in it. And I hope most of you would agree when I say my laptop on the spectrum of graphical computing power is definitely on the lower end, right? And the reason why I'm telling you this is because several times in the past when I've tried my hand at an animated sequence, which is usually out of my comfort zone, I've relied on this particular excuse that I've always used time and time again to somehow convince myself out of it. And I think every 3D artist on this planet has used this excuse at some point in time in their career. The excuse being, my computer sucks, the hardware in it is outdated, and that's the reason why I cannot finish this particular project. I have this grand vision of a scene I want to make and the moment I bring in a high poly photo scan or a 4K textual model into it, Blender throws up this system out of GPU memory error in my face and that's that. I have to now drop this project and move on to something else because Blender and my laptop won't let me render what I really want to make. Right? I hope I'm not alone here when I say that I've used this excuse time and time again to get out of one project after another the moment it got a little difficult. I blamed it on my laptop and moved on. And forget about stopping a project in the middle, half the time I didn't even start a project thinking it would just be impossible to make something that complex with the hardware that I have. But then you scroll through Instagram and you scroll through Twitter and you keep coming across renders after renders and project after project that were made with machines not much better than yours. So the obvious thought to pop up in your head then is then what's holding me back? And I guess that's when the idea to work on a short little 3D film began in my head. One of my favorite creators in the Blender YouTube space for a long time has been William Landgren. In case you don't know him, he is the 16 year old Blender user who has made I think 4 short films at this point and the concept behind his films are super simple. He makes these really short films that are at tops 1 or 2 minutes long and usually contain short and snappy jump cuts but in between you would see some crazy and super detailed 3D scenes and amazing visuals and amazing compositions that not only look great but also tell a great little short story in literally seconds. And I fell in love with this whole style and this whole format, it seemed feasible for someone like me. It seemed like something that I could actually make myself, something my computer could actually handle for a change. I mean, I'd probably not be as good as William is perhaps, but if I could even make something 5% as good as him, I'd be more than happy, I think. And thus began the journey of my own short film, Celsius, or Fahrenheit, if you're American. It began as a side project. It was a project I worked on late at night in the last two hours of my workday, at a time when I was already wasting a ton of time playing games or watching random YouTube videos. So why not invest it on a project I've been wanting to make for a long time? And the idea behind the film, again, was super simple as I explained in the beginning. I just wanted to capture how summer can mean so many different things to so many different people. And I think the first thing I did to make that process much easier and frictionless right at the beginning was I decided I would only have simple medium or close-up shots in the shot, oftentimes with just a singular subject in focus. Nothing complicated, nothing that is gonna blow up my computer, just simple scenes, 
with simple lighting and simple animations. Take out every ounce of friction that could hold me back to finish this project. And another thing I did unknowingly at the beginning that helped me out a lot if I think about it in hindsight was to not think about the whole short film right away and just take it easy and take it bit by bit. Because if you think about the whole thing all at once right at the beginning where you already have so much stuff to do and so much stuff to finish, it can be kind of intimidating, especially if you've never done something like this before like me. So taking it easy at that stage really helps. I didn't even have the whole film planned out at that point. I just had two shots in my head that I wanted to try out. The fan shot and the AC shot because that's where the inception of the idea had come from initially and that's it. I designed those two scenes in about 2-3 days time and in the meanwhile I kept scrolling through Pinterest and Unsplash and all my regular sources of inspiration and kept compiling more and more ideas for different summer related things. Some were inspired from the internet, some from my own life and experience and bit by bit I started compiling one scene after the other, just giving them 2 hours per day, not modeling anything myself, just focusing on scene composition and lighting and nothing else, just taking it lightly and just having fun with it. It. And before I knew it, I had around 15 or 16 partially completed shots that weren't looking so bad. The casualness with which I approached the beginning of the project helped me complete 15 shots in about a month's time or 60 hours or so. And what that did was it gave me a vision. It gave me a storyboard of sorts to see what my final product could look like. But let me stop for a minute. It wasn't all fun and games and positivity and optimism all the time as I'm presenting it to be right now. I will talk about all those shortcomings and performance issues in just a minute. But before we get to that, I would just like to take a few seconds of your time and tell you all about today's sponsor Squarespace. Now, I've already told you all about Squarespace award-winning templates for any possible niche you can think of. I've told you all about their new Fluid Engine that makes customizing those templates literally a seamless drag and drop experience experience like you've never seen before. But as I keep digging deeper and deeper into their whole website building world and workflow, I realize that they have some really cool AI tools as well. You can just type out small descriptions and select an overall tone of what you want in there and Squarespace will just come up with something cool for you. You get complete control over literally everything you add on your website and never for a moment does it get too complicated or too overwhelming for someone who hasn't done this before. I mean really anybody who can operate a mouse and keyboard at this point seems like can also build a website of their own. With Squarespace, which is just crazy. So head on to squarespace.com and try it all out for free for yourself. And once you are ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash stash to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So yeah, go check them out before the deal runs out. All right, let's keep going. So as I was saying, it wasn't all fun and games as I was pretending it to be before. As expected, I was confronted with my old system out of GPU memory nemesis again and again in this project too. But rather than stopping in the middle, as I had done so often in the past, this time I just pulled back a little bit. I asked myself, do I really need a 4K texture on this particular shot? Do I really need a 1 million polygon photo scan in this shot? Is there a way to optimize this scene somehow that could help render it a little faster without jeopardizing my overall vision for it? Questions like these, which had stopped me in the past from continuing a project, as if I was some kind of a purist who couldn't finish a scene just because he couldn't use some 4K textures in it. Because if you really think about it, people make cutbacks on their projects all the time. I keep coming across interviews from major filmmakers where they talk about budget cutbacks and how they couldn't just spend millions and millions of dollars on a particular scene even when they really wanted to and they had to find cheaper and more minimal ways to achieve their vision. Production houses with millions of dollars in budget have to make cutbacks too. So who am I pretending to be an absolute purist? It was kind of becoming clearer that this hardware problem that I keep saying often holds me back in all my projects was just more of an excuse than an actual limitation at this point, at least in my case. So I guess you have got to own up to your laziness and lack of motivation at some point in your life. You can't just keep tapping out of projects just because your laptop threw a mildly inconvenient error, right? And I guess this project for me was the beginning of this newfound attitude. The moment I came across any performance issues, I just made little cutbacks. I decimated all my high poly models, I used the unsubdivide mesh option a lot, I used the merge by distance option a lot, I used the simplify checkbox a lot too to clamp all my texture resolutions to 2K, I went easy on the subdiv modifier to keep everything as low poly as possible, I purged my blend files constantly too so nothing was holding my project back from behind the scenes. Just simple things you can do to reduce a lot of load on your computer, like for rendering animations I would just render 10 samples at really low resolutions to see how the overall animation was looking rather than always rendering it at full resolution with hundreds and hundreds of samples when it was clearly not needed.
needed. I used the step option for rendering too, rather than rendering all frames all the time, only render every two or three frames at a time to save even more time and processing power. And just a solid view render or a material view render was sometimes enough to get a feel for the overall animation as well. And you know what? In all this troubleshooting, I even found out newer optimization tricks, especially this style size field under the memory panel. I don't know, it had such a considerable effect on your render times. I would highly suggest you experiment with it too. Try out different values here and see what gives you the least amount of render times. But anyway, getting back to my point, it was all about doing little things, little cutbacks to get over those performance limitations that my laptop would usually put on me. And also, as I said before, restricting myself to close up and medium shots only helped out a lot too. The wider the shot, the more details you're gonna have to put in it, right? So close up shots and medium shots with a little bit of depth of field can help out a lot as well. And on top of that, the biggest reason why a concept revolving around summer seemed like a great idea according to me was because I could use sunny HDRIs and have ample amounts of light coming from all possible directions and thus cutting down all the performance issues you get with night scenes or dark scenes with very few light sources. Basically, in summary, this became the first time I didn't let those excuses of having a bad PC take over and convince myself to drop a project in the middle like I had done so many times in the past. I actually went through with it for the first time ever in my life and I realized at the end of it that those excuses that I was constantly giving myself then were just excuses and nothing else. I learned that there's always a way to execute an idea if you are resilient enough about it. But again, don't take my optimism as a sign of everything going well all the time. It was not always a fun time. I also had several shots that did not just look right in the two hours I put into them at first. Some shots took several two hour sessions to get them looking even partially right. I learned it takes a lot of effort to finish a long term animated project as compared to just a single still life render. And there are hundreds of reasons and hundreds of problems you can use to convince yourself to not continue working on a particular project and probably just one reason holding you on a thread to complete it, which usually for most people is the promise of a good looking final render I think and that's it. Those are really difficult odds to win against if you think about it. No wonder people usually give up in the middle of most long term projects. And I guess that's why I wanted to make this video, help people out who have been in a similar rut where they seem limited by their computer or laptop and they keep ditching more and more projects right in the middle because of it, but their heart is still stuck at making cool looking animations or just more complex projects in general that they want to make, but just can't due to some self-inflicted limitations. And I am not at all saying that we are always the problem and the computer limitations are just a facade. Yes, having a weak computer is a huge drawback, but what are you gonna do about it? Stop making art, stop pursuing this passion altogether because you can't afford a better machine right now. I hope not. We are gonna have to make the best of what we got. And this video is just a reminder for situations where it's more of a you problem and less of a my computer sucks problem. I hope I could get that message across. And I hope it didn't come across as me just preaching in some way that I'm better than you because I somehow managed to finish one tiny little short film. This was more about trying to inspire people to make what they want to make and not just stop because of the limitations that they put on themselves sometimes. Like I usually do. It's usually just my own laziness and lack of motivation that becomes the reason for a lot of unfinished projects. It's not always the computer or a blender that becomes the road blocker. It's just me being me. So I hope this video came across as that rather than anything else. But yeah, I think that's it. That's all I wanted to say in this video. I'm sure a lot of you clicked on this video expecting a scene by scene breakdown of the whole shot film. Maybe you wanted to know how I made the sand look so good in the shot. Maybe you wanted to know how I made this plane fly over this tree. Or maybe you wanted to know how I did the color grading for the whole thing or the sound design for the whole thing. Little things that caught your eye perhaps and you wanted to know how I made it. And I'm so sorry to disappoint you if that's the case. It was never my plan to do that here on YouTube. My plan was to always share my thought process behind the shot film first here on YouTube and then do all the scene by scene breakdowns upon my Patreon. Because the current members are the reason why I could actually pursue this long term project in the first place. Their constant support is what has led to the completion of this project. And I feel like I at least owe them this. So I've already uploaded the breakdown for around 4 scenes up there when this video goes live. I will have all the source files available there too. And I have also uploaded a 4K version of the short film up there that's available for free if you want to watch the film without the YouTube compression. It costs around $5 a month right now. But after the release of these initial sets of videos, I plan to make multiple tier levels. So the price for the whole thing is going to go up. So if there's any better time to get a subscription there, it would be now. And I'm sure there are a lot of people watching who cannot afford the Patreon. I understand that too. So what I've done is I have hidden a code in the original upload of the short film. You can find the link to that in the description. And if you have the time and patience to go through the video a few times, enter what you think the code is to unlock this link. And if and when you figure it out, you will be redirected to a Google Drive folder that will contain everything that I will eventually put on the Patreon. 
The code isn't super easy to find, you're gonna have to put some effort to find it. But if you are smart enough and curious enough, I am sure you'll find a way around it. So if the Patreon is just too expensive for you right now, you have that route available as well. But I think that's it. That's it for this video. I would really appreciate if you could just spend a little bit of time and go to the original video anyway and give it a watch too if you can, just so YouTube doesn't ignore it as it tends to do sometimes. So please do that if you can. I would really appreciate it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching the video till the end. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below and I will hopefully catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.